Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, well, got yet another exciting, I was just going to say spoiler, but uh, leak. Uh, because, uh, yeah, Wizard still doesn't have this under control apparently, and these things just keep happening, and we keep getting more and more leaks, that uh, many of which end up being real. I will say again, please take everything I say in this episode with a grain of salt, because... Like the previous episode I just did, this is technically a leak. I've not seen it confirmed by Wizards officially. That being said, it looks very legitimate and is probably part of one of the pre-cons. I think it's someone said it's on the back of the packaging, kind of like the recent Gandalf that I talked about is as well. Regardless, let's jump into it. And here's the image just in case you want to see it. That being said, I will note that the, uh, the top right of the image is actually kind of cut off. So we don't see the mana value of this card. That being said... With my MTG.Design version, I made a guesstimation on what that mana value would be. Uh, I would say that the only difference is I, I highly doubt this would be anything more than uh, three mana. I mean, maybe four. I mean, I guess today, maybe four mana. It's either going to be like two green green or like two and a green or one green green or maybe green green green. But uh, I, I would doubt it would be two mana. I would doubt it would be five mana. So uh, let's talk about... What Arwen Weaver of Hope does is a very exciting commander and one that is very reminiscent of a previous card that, well, does a lot of work in one of my favorite decks, a 2-1 Elf Noble that costs 2 and a green. And again, that's an assumption for the 2 and a green. 3 mana is my assumption. Maybe 4. Maybe. Each other creature control enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus 1 counters on equal to Arwen, Arwen Weaver of Hope's toughness. So... This is very reminiscent of Master Biomancer, uh, which is yet another very exciting card. One that is also an elf, but that one I believe is elf mutant and also turns creatures and elf mutants to, not elf mutants, into mutants as well. But that one I believe deals with power. I think it's a 2-4 and it's like, hey, additional counters based on its power. This one is based on its toughness. Now, obviously both of those work very well in the exact same deck too. You know, like if you've got a, you know, plus one counter build that has got Simic colors in it, yeah, utilize both of them. That being said, as a commander, yeah, this is a really, really cool design. One that, well, you can do a lot of exciting things with. Because, of course, well, to start off, hey, uh, just one toughness. Now, that's not nothing. Adding additional counter to a creature coming into play. Just one singular counter. That's nice. I mean, that's not overly impactful, although it is pretty broken with certain things. We'll talk about those here in a bit. But of course, uh, this is based on toughness. It's not even based on the number of counters on this. If that was the case, this would be a slightly different build because you can only take advantage of, you know, ways to get more and more counters on this, which of course there are plenty of those and plenty of ways to do so. Now, this does not say that. So you can just, you know, increase toughness in any which way. You can kind of go Voltron-ish with this to make this just absurdly large. And then every single creature you have come into play is also absurdly large, even larger than your commander, basically. So yeah, there's a lot of really exciting things that you can do with this one. And again, yeah, this is definitely an exciting commander. It's definitely a great include in the 99 of, you know, plus one counter builds. And again, like I mentioned earlier, there are certain, uh, let's just say, uh, shenanigans that you can do with a card like this with the way that this is written. So yeah, again, uh, I will reiterate, this is a leak. It has not been confirmed. This is obviously the empty jot design custom version that I made of it. So keep all of this in mind. That being said, yeah, the picture that I saw looks pretty legitimate, at least to me. So yeah, if you are interested in this commander and you think this is legitimate as well, well, consider checking out that link in the description below for the cards I'm talking about on this episode. I'm going to be taking you through the budget buys, cards that are less than $1, cards are within my budget, and the pricier picks, cards that are outside of my budget, cards that are over $1, but might be within your budget. So let's start things off with, of course, well, the budget buys, like I just mentioned, if you were paying attention. And the first budget buy that I want to start off with is Airy Oofs, if that's how you say it. It's kind of a weird name. Anyways, a 3-3 three, three, oof, 4-4 four, four in a green. Sacrifice it, and it's going to deal damage equal to its power to start a creature with flying. And it also has Persist. Now, Persist is a very interesting, very broken mechanic. When this creature is put in a grave from play, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return to play under its control, they have minus one, minus one counter on it. So, this wasn't nearly as broken before they made a certain rule change, which just made things easier, and also things like this more broken. 
And that rule change basically was, yeah, you don't have to keep track of like separate minus one, minus one counters and plus plus one counters. They just cancel each other out. So if you have a minus one, minus one counter on it, and then you get a plus plus one counter on it, those go away. So basically, in combination with this commander, again, your commander has one toughness, going to be giving this, when it comes into play, one plus one, plus one counter. It negates that minus one, minus one counter that this gets when it dies and comes back. So that means that this can just keep infinitely coming back again and again and again. And of course, because this can sacrifice itself, if your opponents have any flying creatures, if you're playing against your opponent's Ur Dragon deck, they are in trouble. They essentially are going to have no way of stopping you. I mean, unless they get rid of your commander or this permanently. They've got really no way to say, oh, uh, hey, uh, could you not destroy my dragons? And you're like, well, I mean, maybe if you like go fly at someone else. But at any time, I could just wipe out your entire army very, very easily. And of course, there's other advantages that you can get for this just coming back into play again and again and again. And I think we'll actually bring one up here in a little bit. But yeah, keep in mind, persist creatures with a commander that gives out counters like this is pretty crazy. So moving on, Lesser Manticore, yet another persist creature. This one does not work in that same way where it can sacrifice itself. It's a 2-2. You have the discard a card actually can apply. You can pay mana to damage creatures. Cool. But also, again, persist. So this one, again, is literally just a body that's going to be on the field permanently because it's ever dealt with. It just comes right back. And then, yeah, again and again and again. Uh, and, and I mean, there are better things to do than just a persist deck with this. But uh, yeah, if you want to go to combo direction, that's definitely a way that you can go with it. Now, when it comes to that, though, there is a persist creature that has a massive ETB that you're going to want to really take advantage of. Woodfall Prime is a 6-6 six, six trampler that says when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-creature permanent. And of course, it has persist. So essentially, again, with that ETB, take out a non-creature. One of your opponent's non-creatures. Have fun with that. And when this is sacrificed, I mean, if you've got a way to sacrifice or if this is just dealt with, you can take out something else. Again, a free sacrifice outlet plus this just equals wipe out all of your opponent's non-creature permanents. And uh, that includes lands. So even though, yes, mass land destruction is not really typically something you'd see in casual, this is just kind of like those, hey, um, a game's going to end at some point. I've got a game ending win condition. Let's end things. Yeah, I just played an eight cost card, combos with my commander plus his other outlet. It depends on your playgroup if they're okay with that. Mine is. Uh, so, yeah, wipe out lands and everyone just says, oh, okay, well, we won't let that happen again. And then shuffle back up. Moving on, we've got Black Blade Reforged. When it comes to this commander, again, like I mentioned, your commander is not dependent on just the number of counters on it to be like, hey, uh, give out counters. It is dependent on its toughness, which can be variable based on a lot of other factors, including, hey, if you equip it like a Voltron commander, yeah, you can make it quite beefy. Plus, was one for each land you control. You are in green, of course. You've got access to a ton of great land ramp, the best land ramp. Basically, all of the land ramp outside of Wayfarer's Bobble, essentially, and like Burnished Heart. And like, that's it. And so, hey, um, you get to get all the lands in play, make your commander absolutely massive very easily with this, and then every single creature you have coming into play gets an absurd amount of counters on them from the get go. Speaking of which, Raised by Giants. This card is hilarious. Commander creatures you own have base power time just 10, 10, or giants and other types. So now your commander is also a giant. Cool. That doesn't really matter all that much. What matters is that base power and toughness 10, 10. Your commander, even without any other pump effects, without any counters on it, is now a 10, 10. That means that when other creatures come into play, they come into play with 10 counters on them. Well worth the six mana for this card. Moving on, Solidarity of Heroes. Again, if you are going to go, you know, I mean, you can focus it in different directions. You can focus it more on plus one counters. Obviously, having good plus one counter synergies in this can be very helpful because regardless, your commander is going to be distributing counters. Solidarity of Heroes is a great card. Choose any number of target creatures, double the number of counters on them. And uh, yeah, you can uh, obviously strive this for an extra one in a green. Regardless, if you're targeting your commander with this, and let's say your commander has four counters on it, you have double those counters to, you know, eight essentially, and there you go. Your commander just went from, again, assuming no other pump effects, five to nine toughness. And now all your other creatures that are coming to play benefit from that. Next up, Forgotten Ancient. This one is a really funny kind of interaction with your commander. Zero, three elemental. Whenever a player casts a spell, you may put a counter on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may move any number of counters from Forgotten Ancient on other creatures. 
This one, again, is going to enter the battlefield. A number of counters on it based on your commander's power. So let's say your commander has, or sorry, toughness. Let's say your commander has five toughness. Cool. Comes to play with five counters on it. Then, you know, throughout the next turns or whatever, your opponent's going to be casting spells. You're going to be casting spells as well. And let's just say this has 10 counters on it then. So this benefit already from your commander giving it counters and it gets other counters. Then at your upkeep, you say, let's get back to the commander. Your commander gets even larger, making the next creatures coming to play even larger. Just keep getting more and more counters on it. Your opponents don't stop this. They're going to be in big trouble. Next up, Death's Presence. This has to be dealt with or your opponents are going to be gone. Uh, enchantment, whenever a creature control dies, you get X counters on it. Where X, sorry, X counters, counters on target creature control where X is the power of that creature that died. So whenever any of your creatures die, again, they're going to have an absurd amount of power because your commander is giving them that. You put that power back on probably your commander. Then the next creature coming to play comes in even bigger. It's kind of like doubling, quadrupling, making your creatures absolutely massive in no time. And again, in combination with like a sacrifice outlet and again, a persist creature, this is just infinite power to essentially all your other creatures. Power and toughness. So have fun with that. Moving on, Fungal Sprouting. This one really take, takes advantage of just the size of a creature you can have. You're going to put X11 Sapling Creature Tokens on the battlefield. X is the greatest power of creature you control. So again, whether it's your commander or another creature, could be 10 plus power very easily. Make 10 one ones. Oh, but they're not going to be one ones because your commander does not specify non-token. So any creature in the battlefield is going to come into play with that many counters on it equal to its toughness. So again, let's say you've got 10, you know, toughness for your commander. You're getting all those saplings, which again would just be one ones coming into play with 10 counters on them. So again, if your commander was the biggest creature in play with 11 power, then I guess that would be right. You get 11, 11, 11s. Good luck to your opponents. Again, for four mana, gross. And especially gross in combination with Garrick's Pack Leader, which can be incredible in this deck, an invaluable creature in this deck. 4-4 four, four Beast, whenever the creature with power three or greater in his battle from your control, you may draw a card. That's probably going to be every single one of your creatures. Because again, your commander is already just dishing out an extra counter to that creature. So unless it's like, I mean, I guess you could have, you know, zero power creatures coming to play. Sure. Most of them are going to have one power at least. So that just takes one more power or one more toughness for your commander to actually get all your other creatures there. Essentially, no matter what, you got you know, three toughness for your commander. You're getting every single one of your creatures there every single time. Again, if you've got token generators like that fungal sprouting, you're going to be drawing an absurd amount of cards on top of all the other crazy shenanigans you are going to be doing. But now that we talked about all the budget buys, and again, as a reminder, they're going to be in the deckless link, deckless link, cardless link in the description below. There we go. Let's move on to the pricier picks. And we're going to start things off with one that used to be budget a long time ago, and I really wish it was budget because it's a really cool card, Cauldron of Souls, a fantastic, fantastic board wipe protection card that can be great with a commander like this. Artifact for five, tap, choose any number of target creatures. Each of those creatures gains persistence all of turn. So again, when that creature dies, it comes back into play with a minus minus one counter on it. Uh, unless it has a minus one minus one counter on it, then it's not going to do that. That being said, again, um, yeah, I've already illustrated why Persist is so incredibly deadly and pretty broken with this commander. This is a one-off effect. Well, it's a repeatable one-off effect. You can't just go infinite with this unless you have an untap effect for it, which would have to be repeatable as well. That being said, hey, uh, save your army. Your army comes back, gets a plus one counter on them thanks to your commander as well cancels out those minus one minus one counters as long as you can untap with this you basically have a repeatable way to protect your entire team again and again and again yeah pretty gross pretty gross and you can also politic with this card too you're like hey you want to keep that creature mm, okay if i let you keep that creature comes back to play with minus one minus one counter on it mm, what can you do for me what are you gonna do for me uh you gonna go attack without a player with that creature you're gonna never attack with that creature again great cool make deals moving on the Ozlith. yeah it's an expensive card for a reason Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, all counters on it, you get those counters on the Ozlith. Beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozlith has counters on it, you may move all counters from an untarred creature. This kind of like a way, like, you know, Death's Presence, but this one, like, stores up your counters and allows you to distribute them. Goodness gracious. Yeah, this is a great card. Because if your creatures die, you just stack those counters on this. Even if your commander dies, you just stack the counters on this. You get your commander back into play. Combat, get all those counters back on your commander. And then some. Um, Yeah, sign me up for that. And then we've got Ozlith again, the Shattered Spire this time. One or, one or plus one kind of one or plus one counters upon an artifact creature control that many plus one you can also utilize this to actually put a counter on target artifact creature control by paying two active on the sorcery so first up yeah that's basically like hardened scales essentially and having all those kinds of effects in this kind of a deck like that peer etc 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 is going to be a great effect doubling up counters of, or doubling up i mean actually giving additional counters is a fantastic thing and again like this one hey also being able to get counters just on something again 
att uh, using this to just get counters on your commander pay two you know put on your commander that's gonna be two counters right there this builds up a lot over time the amount of power that you're dishing out to the rest of your team next up defiler vigor can also dish out a lot of counters six six trampler for just five mana this costs cast a green permanent spell you may pay two life those spells cost one less to, or a green less to cast for each life you pay this way effect reduces only amount of green mana you pay so yeah this helps you cast spells for cheaper first of all and again you're in a mono green deck so a lot of your spells are going to be cheaper because of this i'm sure you have to pay some life that's okay whenever cast a green permanent spell you put a plus one counter on each creature you control so again this gets even more counters on all your creatures making them all larger including your commander which of course can be huge and yeah, I've got to mention it. Hardened scales, et cetera, et cetera. All those are great. Those that add additional counters. Doubling season type effects also are incredible. This one, first of all, doubles your tokens, which is gross. Again, with something like Fungal Sprouting or a card we'll talk about here in a little bit. And of course, on top of that, doubles the number of counters you get on your permanents as well. So, hey, uh, get even more plus one counters on your creatures. Go crazy. Yeah, if I don't bring this up, people yell at me in the comments below. So there you go. Doubling season. Yeah, it's a good card. Who knew? Anyways, greater good. We talked about like a sacrifice outlet, how it could be very good for assist creatures. This one's just good overall with this deck. Sacrifice creature, draw cards equal to sacrifice creatures power, then discard three cards. Again, your creatures are going to have an absurd amount of power. They're just going to have an absurd amount of power. You get your commander to a point where it's got like 10 toughness. Your creatures just come into play, ready to go. Sacrifice them, draw a ton of cards, discard some, just three, but you're definitely going to be gaining a lot of card advantage with this. And again, in combination with those, you know, types of effects like Death's Presence, the Ozolith, in combination with, again, Persist Creatures, this can be absolutely crazy. And then we've got Overwhelming Stampede. Yeah, take advantage of your creature's power, because uh, the, the toughness for your commander is going to, uh, you know, obviously translate to power for other creatures. To all turn creatures you control, get Trample, get plus X, plus X, or X the greatest power in creatures you control. A good finisher. Again, your creatures inherently might not have a way to get damage through. This says, yeah. Let's do that. Let's just swing out again. If our biggest creature is 20 power, goodbye opponents. And that's not going to be very hard for us to get to. So we also have unnatural growth. This can help out in a lot of ways. Beginning of each combat, double the power numbers each creature control in of turn. This happens every single combat, not just your own, which is huge. But yeah, you can really play with this and make sure that you're making the right plays. Let's say that, hey, I just really want to focus on getting big creatures into play, right? I'll go to combat, I'll you know, double up all my creatures' power, including my commander, probably power and toughness. That is important, the toughness, obviously. I'll go to combat, I'll do that, and then I'll wait till second main phase. If you don't want to lose your creatures, don't do it. Wait till second main phase. Again, let's say your commander had 10 or 5 toughness or whatever. Now it's up to 10. If it was at 10, it's at 20. Then you play your creatures second main, get them absolutely massive. And of course, this really helps out in combat as well. Finally, though, we've got Avenger of Zendikar. Um, yeah, hey... Like I mentioned earlier, Fungal Sprouting, taking advantage of making a bunch of creature tokens and then uh, making those absolutely massive is a really fun thing. And of course, Vendor Zendikar can make them even more massive throughout the game. 5-5 five, five, Elemental for 5 Green Green. Enters the battlefield to make a 0-1 plant creature token for each land you control. It's going to be a lot. Again, like we mentioned, you're in green. You're going to have a ton of lands in play. Have fun doing that. On top of that, again, landfall. Get a land into play. Get counters on your plants. What's not to love about this? So yeah. This commander, I think, has a lot of potential again, as long as it's real. <laughs> it is, uh, I will iterate, technically a leak. It has not been officially confirmed that I've seen. That being said, a lot of leaks in the past have been very real. This one looks very legitimate. It would take a lot of effort to actually fake something like this. Um, but yeah, I'm not putting it past people. But that being said, again, I personally do believe that this one is a real card. Seems to be a spoiler to me. We'll see, though, in the future. You know if this one's actually confirmed regardless if you are interested in this commander and you believe it to be real as well make sure you check out that card list link in the description below for all the cards i talked about on this episode make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more quick takes and spoilers coming out and maybe even links wizards get things under control please figure it out come on you can do it oh, we know you can all right uh maybe you can't anyways <laughs> of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.